Hello, welcome to you all in our channel Banking Preparation. In this video, we are going to describe about the monetary policy of fiscal year 2081-82. If you are new in our channel and if you haven't watched the previous part of monetary policy of fiscal year 2081-82 in Nepali media, you can check the link, video link in the description box below and you can check out there. And in this video, we are going to describe the monetary policy major highlights in English medium. Now, let's start the video. Now, let's start this video with the backgrounds of monetary policy. According to the Nepal Rastra Bank Act 2058, the main objective of this bank or Nepal Rastra Bank is to manage the necessary monetary and foreign exchange policies to maintain price and exchange rate stability for the sake of economic stability and sustainable development of the economy. This bank has been issuing monetary policy every year since the fiscal year 2059 and 60. The recent state of the economy has been mixed according to the statistics for the first 11 months of the financial year 2080-81. Inflation is within the target range and the external sector is also strong. Due to more liquidity in the banking system, there, uh, the interest rate on deposit as well as loans are decreasing. It is estimated that the gross domestic product has improved compared to the previous year. However, the expenditure and revenue mobilization of the government of Nepal has remained below the target. Similarly, the credit expansion of banks and financial institutions is lower than expected. And we can see that the ratio of non-performing loan has increased. Likewise, Although there has been a gradual improvement in the world economy, the space of improvement has been so slow and uneven. Economic growth and inflation in developed economies are approaching peak COVID levels. However, in most of the emerging and developing countries, economic growth has not returned to the rhythm and inflation is also high. Due to this, most of the central banks have kept the policy rate at a higher level. In addition, while formulating the monetary policy of fiscal year 2081-82, the objectives, priorities and programs of the budget of the government of Nepal for the fiscal year 2081-82, the 16th plan, the 4th strategic plan of Nepal Rashtra Bank, the opinion of the monetary policy recommendation committee and the opinion and suggestion received from various stakeholders have also been taken into consideration while formulating the monetary policy. Now let's see the major highlights of monetary policy of fiscal year 2081-82. Governor of Nepal Rashtra Bank Mahaprasad Adhikari has announced the monetary policy for the current financial year 2081-82 at 2081 Sravan 11. Policy rate Reduction. The policy rate has been reduced from 5.5% to 5%. This step aimed to promote borrowing and investment and to promote the economic growth. Reduced bank rate. The bank rate has reduced from 7% to 6.5%. This decision indicates the central bank's commitment to maintaining financial stability and controlling inflation. Similarly, stability through the unchanged ratio, the mandatory cash ratio and statutory liquidity ratio have been retained at their current levels. The ratio ensures that banks maintain a certain percent of their deposits in the form of cash or liquid assets. Contributing to overall financial system stability, there has been no change in statutory liquidity ratio SLR, that is, 12% for commercial bank and 10% for development banks and finance companies show SLR has been has not changed. It it's remained constant like previous year 2080 or 80-81. Similarly, the goal of monetary policy is to maintain foreign exchange reserve to cover at least seven months of goods and services imports. Similarly, ensure liquidity and loan disbursement to meet economic growth target. The government, Nepal government has set an economic growth rate uh, 
aged 6% for this fiscal year 2081-82 and monetary policy is also aligned to ensure that there will be the enough liquidity and loan disbursement to the private sector to meet the target growth rate of 6%. So economic growth rate is targeted of 6%. Likewise, inflation rate is targeted at 5%. The target helps to ensure the economy remains stable by preventing excessive inf inflation. Similarly, removal of sheer collateral and cap for institutional investor, NRB has lifted the 20 crore limit on sheer collateral loans for institutional investors. This change aims to enhance the investment flexibility and boost the stock market, benefiting the border economy. Individual investor will continue to have the cap of 15 crore in place. Next one is reducing provisioning requirements for banks. Provisioning for good loan has been reduced from 1.20% to 1.10%. This move is expected to improve the bank profitability. So this focus on the bank profitability. Meanwhile, credit expansion, the monetary policy has increased the target for credit expansion to 12.5% from the 11.5% uh, of previous year. So the cre credit expansion has been increased. Support for private equity and venture capital investments. NRB will not blacklist the private equity and venture capital, capital even if their uh, investee companies are blacklisted. This is aimed to encourage the investment and provide more security to the investor because the very nature of PEVC is investing in other companies and if they become a blacklisted due to the one company in their portfolio, this will affect other companies to go AML system in order to make the arrangements made for prevention of financial investment in money laundering and terrorist activities more effective. The indicated institutions of various sectors with high risk will be joined in the go AML system. Similarly, promoting use of AI in licensed institutions the policy also takes about promoting the use of artificial intelligence in the licensed entities. Not sure that not sure what this exactly means, but maybe the central bank is taking about integration of AI in various aspects of banking and financial services. Agricultural and startup loans. Loans will be provided against the agricultural produce and there will be encouragement for investment in startups. Similarly, key focus on the microfinance sec sector. The central bank says the merger and acquisition of microfinance uh, institution is one of the one of its focus areas to address the current issues in the microfinance sector. NRB is committed to a review of the regu regulatory framework concerning interest rates and service charges imposed by microfinance institutions. Currently, microfinance is allowed to charge a maximum interest rate 15% on loans. The policy also takes about making provisions to enable microfinance customers who are unable to repay loans due to unforeseen circumstances to restructure their loans by paying a specified percentage of the interest. Similarly, maintaining foreign exchange reserve sufficient to cover the importation of goods and services for up to seven months. By maintaining such reserves, the country can safeguard against fluctuation in foreign exchange rates and unexpected economic disruptions, thereby supporting a stable and resilient economy. Next one is provision to support capital stress, new capital instruments, Reduction of provisions on goods loans to 1.10% from 1.20%. Review of credit buy or purchase risk weight. Increase in regulatory reserve portfolio. Inclusion of regulatory reserve in tied to capital. Likewise, non-performing loans. Loan after regulatory, regular repayments will be upgraded to watch list and after six months to pass category. Microfinance, interest rate and service charge will be reviewed with a priority on marginalized groups. Next one is importing, import selling, increase to US dollar 50K through draft or TT, increase to US dollar 
100k through DAP or DA. Those all are the some of the major highlights of monetary policy 2081-82. Now let's see the some of the challenges related to monetary policy 2081-82. Here are the some a list of challenges of monetary policy 2081-82. Despite the increase in investable assets with bank and financial institutions, credit expansion has not increased as expected even when the interest rate of loan is low. If there is no significant improvements in domestic demand, it will be difficult to improve loan demand only through monetary policy. When more efforts are made to expand the overall demand of the economy through monetary easing, if there is a no improvement in real sector accordingly, financial stability may be at risk. In this situation, the challenge is to achieve long-term financial stability while maintaining short-term ease through monetary policy is one of the challenges. The central bank can improve credit flow and facilitate economic activity while maintaining macroeconomic and financial stability through monetary, financial and foreign exchange related arrangements. In a situation where there is a more liquidity, the activation of other policies is also necessary to increase the demand for loans and solve, solve the financial problems. Likewise, Russian-Ukraine war, which started before the world economy could recover from the global crisis of COVID-19, and the tension in the Middle East, which has been ongoing since the first quarter of the previous financial year, has continued. So this one is also the one of the challenges or risks to make the financial stability in the economy and for the economic growth also. Likewise, looking at the inflation trend analysis of the recent months and the scenario of Indian inflation, it is forecasted that Nepal's inflation will be around 5% in the fiscal year 2081-82. However, there is a risk that if the prices of essential commodities such as food and fuel increases due to external factor, it may again put pressure on inflation. So we are highly dependent on the extra foreign country for the you know um, essential commodities such as food, fuel, and etc. In this scenario, if the prices of the essential commodities and uh, fuel increases, that will automatically increase the inflation. So maintaining the inflation rate around 5% is one of the challenges for the fiscal year 2081-82. Foreign exchange reserves are high due to encouraging in remittance inflow, shrinking imports and increased tourist arrivals. There is a, an opportunity to use of foreign exchange reserves for the construction of productive physical infrastructure, establishment of productive industries, import substitution and export promotion. This one is not challenging. This one is one of the opportunity for the fiscal year 2081-82. So you can see this point as a beneficiary point or you can say that this is the opportunity for the uh, country to uh, um, develop the country or like... Uh, uh, invest the such uh, foreign exchanges in the productive physical infrastructure or productive industries and um, increase the import and discard, uh, decrease the exports. So this one is the one of the opportunity for the current fiscal year 2081-82. The government's revenue mobilization is weak and government's finances are under pressure from the perspective that imports have decreased and its structural changes are taking place. Economic activities are yet to improve. As a result, the total outstanding public debt has almost doubled in the last decade, reaching 42.4% of GDP by SR 2081. However, the proposed domestic Debt mobilization for fiscal year 2081-82 may not put much pressure on the interest rate when there is an easy liquidity in the banking system, but the need for productive use of the public debt remains. So there is a high need of use the, this uh, public debt in a productive sector. So this one is the one of the challenges. And besides this, all the challenges, this monetary policy is so flexible and it, it tries to cover all the sector of the economy and it also promote or encourage the banking sector by not, uh, not increasing the interest rate, um, CRR, SLR, you know. At the same time, 
It's also tried to increase the economic growth at 6% and man by maintaining the 5% level of uh, inflation. At the same time, this monetary policy also flexible towards the uh, stock market. So this uh, monetary policy is so flexible for the current fiscal year 2081-82. Governor Adhikari emphasizes that the objectives of this monetary policy are to tackle challenges in the capital market and to foster financial stability and growth within the banking sector. The new monetary policy is designed to adaptable aligning closely with the government budget programs and the 16th development plans. So this much for today's video. I hope you like this video. For more, please visit our channel. If you are new in our channel and if you haven't watched the previous part of monetary policy in Nepali medium, you can check the link in the description box below. And for more, please visit our channel. Thank you for watching us.